Okay. So, here is a little recapitulation of what uh, was done in the last uh, two lectures. So, um, except this part, this is what we are going to do. Uh, one of the things that we are going to uh, derive today. Um, so, what we found in the example of the uh, 2D cosmology is that um, <clears throat> the in vacuum okay, was not annihilated by uh, was annihilated by a mixture of the creation and annihilation modes of the out uh, particles. As a result, uh, the um, the in vacuum is some kind of a coherent state built out of a large number of particles of uh, so it is a bath of particles we computed the particle density and it looks like that. Recall that this uh, object looks complicated is still a pure state. Okay. So, this is all being done in the Heisenberg uh, picture in which the state does not evolve in time, but the operators evolve in time. So, this statement can be thought of as saying that this in vacuum evolves okay, to uh, for infinite time to uh, become a state of this kind. Okay. So, a pure state evolves to a pure state. Okay. That is one of the lessons that you have to keep in mind. So, in case of Rindler, so this was a time dependent geometry. In case of Rindler, it was uh, a, a choice of the frame, a non inertial frame. Rindler observers were accelerated observers and the vacuum that they constructed, which I call uh, zero Rin, okay, that is the vacuum of the Rindler observer and the vacuum of the Minkowski observers was again some kind of a coherent state, okay, but it was built out of entangled pairs coming from the right and the left. Today my notation is a little different, yesterday I called them B, okay, today I am calling them A okay. and uh, the R and L I am uh, simply uh, denoting by uh, non prime is unprimed is R and primed is uh, L to be consistent with today's uh, notation. Okay. Um, so, this state could be uh, rewritten in terms of this so called thermofield double, okay, which is again of course, pure state, uh, which is an entangled state between the left and the right the primed fellows and the unprimed fellows. And if you take a trace of the Somaica density matrix out of this, um, a pure state density matrix. So, multiply this by this dual vector and then trace it over the left modes, then you get a thermal state that is a mixed state out of the uh, right sided uh, oscillators and um, uh, oscillators on the right. So, this is called a purification. So, this state is a pure state, which is a purification of the thermal state here okay, by inventing. So, this let us say that this is a system and this is system prime. So, you invent a second system, you couple it to this guy okay, in an entangled sort of way such that this this thermal state can be obtained by tracing a uh, pure state density matrix built out of the both the systems. Okay. So, this was a device that was used by Takahashi and Umezawa okay, that is uh, where they introduced this notion of the thermophile double it is like a system and a bath. Okay. So, there are the system bath models okay, in which um, you say that uh, you know a thermal bath can be understood okay, from a pure state in a larger system. Okay. Um, so, this is this is that other system second system which turns out to be an identical system in this case and uh, so this. Um, so, we will find that this structure in fact, uh, arises also of the eternal black hole okay, and uh, pretty much the same physics goes through and uh, this uh, statement would be true for uh, with, with, with the following replacements that the Rindler 
vacuum will be replaced by the Schwarzschild vacuum and the Minkowski vacuum will be replaced by the Hartle Hawking vacuum. Okay. The, for the collapsing black hole, the situation will be a little different. Okay. Instead of the Hartle Hawking vacuum here, it will be the uh, Unruh vacuum. Okay. So, that is the result that I have uh, put in here and again it will be an um, uh, entangled uh, state and uh, leading to a uh, density matrix like this, but it will also have a flux. Okay, so, we will we'll mention the results. Today, I will uh, skip some uh, uh, quite a lot of derivations, because I would not have that much time. It is a particle production, but it is uh, still a pure state. Okay. It is a state of this kind. That is fine. It is time dependent perturbation theory. You can think of this as I as I mentioned that you can think of this as time dependent perturbation theory. It is a scalar field with a particular time dependent coupling in the middle and uh, you know there is no problem. It is a time dependent Hamiltonian, but certainly the evolution is unitary. Question? Uh, yeah. Sorry. Uh, I mean you, you said this thermal state uh, that can be obtained as a pro through a process of purification by coupling it to a, another system and taking a pure state in that coupled state and right. taking trace over some the other system. Right. So, is it true for any mixed state? That uh, such a purification can be obtained? Yes. Ah, I do not know. Um, for thermal states, the answer is yes. For any arbitrary mixed state, I do not know. Sandeep, you have some answer? <coughs> I do not know. I do not need the answer. Uh, that is that's, that's an interesting question. I do not know. <coughs> In a sufficiently sufficiently big uh, thing, I think one can always do it. Whether by uh, inventing a second identical system, it can be done. That I don't know. But there may be a, there must be a theorem that a mixed state can be uh, sort of uh, obtained from tracing over a very large uh, uh, number of uh, thing. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So. Um, all right, good. So now let us. Uh, so here, here are some elements of uh, black hole geometry. So this is the familiar black, uh, Penrose diagram of a, of a black hole. Ignore the shaded part at the moment. So this is. Uh, so I, I I believe that this is. I'm not going to derive this. I believe everybody knows this. This is the Penrose diagram of a maximally extended uh, short shell uh, geometry. Um, this is another uh, uh, picture of a black hole geometry. Again, ignore the shaded parts. Okay, in the Eddington-Finkelstein coordinate system. So the I have I'll use these notations uh, u equal to t minus r star and v equal to p plus r star. These are called advanced and retarded null times and uh, where r star is this Reggie Wheeler tortoise coordinate log of r over 2 m minus 1. Okay, so, uh, the conformal coordinates are built out of uh, this uh, uh, this combination t minus r star and so on and in order to go to a Penrose diagram you uh, you know exponentiate these and in a particular combination and you get uh, Kruskal coordinates and then you compactify that to get these uh, diagrams okay all right yes Uh, in here, yeah, yeah. In terms of key, that is correct. In terms of key, so if I write this, maybe that's a better notation. In terms of key, it is that way. So indeed, um, uh, the correct uh, writing is in terms of key. Uh, uh, 
course, is always positive, but that hides this uh, fact uh, over there. Good. Okay. So now, um, right. So now, let us consider um, the surface of a star. Uh, which is collapsing, okay. and uh, so the surface of a star will have the um, you know sort of massive uh, particle, and uh, that massive particle, uh, all, all massive particles start from this uh, point in the infinite past, and uh, let's let's say this is just the trajectory of uh, that, and then the uh, you know this part then the uh, all the things so the shaded part will be described by some different geometry. Okay. So, that is not part of the Schwarzschild geometry, but the outside unshaded part will still be governed by Schwarzschild geometry. In particular, this will be the horizon and uh, so, the, um, so the you can you can make a further uh, transformation, conformal transformation to make it into the right half of this diagram. Okay. Normally, the right half of this diagram is what, so you can take make formal transformations okay, to get a thing over here. I have, so this is r equal to 0, this origin of polar coordinates r equal to 0. So, this is r equal to infinity going this way and I have also taken negative r here just to reflect the thing, it uh, is it's the antipodal points which are being uh, represented in, in, in fashion. So, what is the idea here that, okay, so let, let me just give you some more simple minded thing. Here is a star which is collapsing. Okay. You can think of this as a simple scattering process. Let us say you are sending in some, some wave and um, so of course there's a, there's some geometry created by this guy so some there will be some amount of back scattering let's ignore that for the moment okay the the part that goes through the potential barrier so wh 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 what are the things that can happen to it it can get absorbed okay or it can get transmitted through the collapsing matter when it gets transmitted through the collapsing matter of course there will be mode mixing because it goes through some time dependent geometry. Okay. So, things which are positive frequency modes here will be a mixture of positive and negative frequency modes here. That is what we have seen in the cosmology example. Okay. And uh, we have also seen, so this is something and furthermore this is time dependent geometry. So, there would be particle creation as well. Okay. So, you can have one going to n kind of scattering here. You can even have no particle coming and particles being produced. Okay, so, that is 0 going to n, that is Hawking radiation, that is what we are going to uh, derive now. And also, of course, there could be absorption, any number of particles going to the no particle uh, state, that is absorption. So, that can also happen. So, these are the S matrices that we are going to uh, um, talk about. Remember, we are still talking about S matrix, that is unitary evolution. So, pure state going to pure state. Okay, this is what we are uh, going to derive first and then we will take into account back reaction and see what happens. Okay, all right. So, that is that's, that's the picture and this thing is contracting okay, and at some stage it will contract within and go inside the horizon of this uh, object and then it will keep contracting forever and even when you know it becomes a time dependent uh, a time independent geometry it settles down contracts to a point classically that is what you the picture is then the geometry inside this horizon remains a time dependent geometry. So, that is very important to realize that the geometry inside the horizon here, the this is the horizon in this case. Okay, so another another thing that I should mention is that um, the, 
those waves which come early enough okay can escape okay but after the horizon has formed if some wave comes it's trapped completely okay so so there'll be i i have to uh, distinguish between these two uh, different asymptotic future possibilities okay the early waves can escape out okay into infinity again but the late waves cannot escape out to infinity so they 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 hit the singularity okay so here's a picture in this diagram so there is a particular ray so here's the collapsing matter and these are these are your waves they could be massless uh, uh, you know they could be photons so there's a particular wave which just about well so there there are early guys okay which can escape okay so they, this guy has escaped there, there's one guy who is grazes the horizon okay in fact the trajectory of this uh, 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 of this photon defines the horizon for me and there is uh, uh, anything later than this okay goes back into the uh, thing so these wave modes i'll call a omega so this will be given by e to the power minus i omega this is going inward so this will be in terms of the v coordinate okay uh, why does this and, and and this r star remember at uh, r going to infinity this r star is like r okay so this is just like plane wave okay why is there a plane wave solution in a black hole geometry well it's only asymptotically uh, the, of this fashion inside is complicated okay but asymptotically the potential uh, seen by the scalar field okay goes to zero okay so as a result it's just e to the power minus i omega v okay where v in this region is approximately e plus r so it's an ingoing wave as if it's minkowski space this fellow is similar okay it's uh, is given by e to the power minus i omega u is outgoing okay so it's a function of the u coordinate so it's t uh, minus r and uh, this guy inside okay i can okay so i should say here that this there are solution these are of course uh, you know um uh, uh, this form a basis of solutions of uh, the uh, um, uh, klein gordon equation in the black hole geometry um, uh, but of course you can take any linear combination of these also as solutions okay but this is the these are the wave modes which a far away minkowski observer will use why so because the minkowski clock is given by this time okay so these waves waves are positive frequency with respect to minkowski time okay so um, the minkowski observer will use this so there's a canonical choice of wave modes okay when there are asymptotically flat regions in space time this is something that i have mentioned in the cosmology example okay so it's it's these guys similarly these are the ones that use minkowski clock okay so therefore these are positive frequency modes according to uh, the minkowski observer okay good so um for these there is no canonical choice okay because these fellows okay never face uh, the outside world anymore so there is no flat region for these uh, these guys okay so i will continue to uh, use here but this is just a matter of convenience i'll also ch choose e to the power minus i omega u for these guys as well but there is no justification for this um, you know this this is as good a choice as any any other thing that you could uh, do okay so this will be my so what are the what are my wave modes <coughs> what are the mode expansions so the mode expansions will be so i'm interested only in the ingoing uh, waves coming from infinity and and 
my in vacuum will be given by this <coughs> and uh, similarly, I can make an expansion I have one V only. Yes. Oh, this is at R going to infinity. So, if you look at this formula, you will find two behaviors of R star, the infinity behavior, okay, so that is an important point. The infinity behavior is dominated by this. So, R star is R and uh, the at near horizon R star is given by this log. Okay, so, that goes to minus infinity. Okay. So, let me say this right away now, uh, now that we have discussed this is that when R star goes to minus infinity for any fixed t, u goes to plus infinity. Okay. So, at the future horizon such as here u goes to plus infinity. This is something that we are going to use right now. So, let me write this. So, for this particular ray, by the way, you know in most textbooks etcetera, you will find this being written as a deflection at r equal to 0, okay. but if you use negative r, then actually that is just continuing. Okay. So, this is just imaged here. Okay, that is the other uh, you know theta going to theta plus pi and uh, so this, this is actually uh, coming straight through the collapsing matter and this u 0, the value of u at the future horizon is uh, plus infinity. Okay, this is something that I am going to use right now. Okay, good. So, and uh, the uh, So, there are these two kinds of modes and their complex conjugates that define the uh, future vacuum, the vacuum, the outgoing modes and they are defined by. So, I have defined in the figure what these fellows are. Okay. So, <coughs> and so this will be my definition of 0 out. Okay. So, now let me uh, take you through Hawking's derivation of uh, the relation between these two vacua and so that is that is the following that. So, recall that let, so let me take uh, one neighboring, so there is of course, this last photon which just barely which grazes the horizon okay. and uh, let us take something which is a little earlier than that. Okay. So, it is an uh, somewhat early uh, radiation, it starts out its life. Okay. So, V 1 is slightly less than V naught like that and then it ends up at a place close to the horizon. Okay. Um, now, this is some finite value of uh, u 1, okay. but u naught here is infinity. Okay. So, re so, recall what is the mode here, the mode, so let me write maybe, let me do this once more here. So, this region okay. So, this is the, this is the trajectory of the light ray, the last, uh, I mean the one that grazes the horizon and so this is V 1, this is V naught and this is U 1. So, the mode uh, B omega of U that is in here that looks like E to the power minus I omega U. Okay. So, the phase difference between this um, this wave uh, wavelet and this one okay, is the difference right between this and that. 
Now, the difference of u, how much is the difference of u between this and that? Can somebody tell me? Difference of u between this and this. So, remember this is the horizon, this is the horizon. Horizon has a value which is u naught equal to infinity and this u 1 is something finite of omega u between this ray and this ray that is infinity. Okay, so, there is an infinite phase difference okay, between here and here for a finite difference of r, okay, for a finite difference of the radial uh, coordinate. Okay. Now, if you show this is some, some derivation which I am not going to do in Schwarzschild geometry for radial null uh, rays, okay, the affine radial null geodesics, the affine parameter is r. Appropriately normalized affine parameter lambda is just r. So, so lambda is just r for. So this is the affine parameter. Okay. So, so for a finite change of affine parameter, there is an infinite uh, change of phase. Okay, so these are highly blue shifted uh, um, uh, rays, highly blue shifted blue shifted waves. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is to do the same thing as I had done before, to take a common surface, okay, on which to evaluate both a omega and the b omega. Between this mode expansion and this mode expansion on a common surface, and that common surface I am going to take now as phi minus. Okay, so I am going to pass evolve these guys. Okay, onto phi minus. So when I do that, I have I already know that these are highly blue shifted uh, waves. Okay, so there is of course, so two things happen because of that. These are very highly blue shifted. So, they just pass through like bullet okay, through the collapsing matter. Okay. That is one thing that happens. The other one is that I can in, uh, ignore interference and scattering and so on and so forth. Okay. It is uh, geometric optics. So, I can use geometric optics to trace the uh, uh, you know I, I back evolve these rays okay, this, uh, thing, okay. which means that the affine parameter distance between these pair of rays okay, can be uh, tracked. Okay. I can just track this particular ray by a, a, a given change of affine parameter between these. Okay. Uh, is, is, this, uh, is this clear? Okay, that is what geometric optics does. Okay. Just keep track of a pair of geodesics okay, with given affine parameter distance. The affine parameters okay, are all finite because this is just given by R. So, r is 2 m here and r is 2 m minus whatever some let us say it is um, uh, you know 2.1 m or something. Okay. So, you just keep track of the affine parameter change. Now, it is easy to see that so now the so this I have to tell you that um, so what am I trying to do? I am trying to find out that Although there is a finite change of affine parameter, there is an infinite change of, uh, uh, of u. So, what is the relation between the value of r here and the value of, so that is r 0, that is of course 2 m and this is r equal to r 1. Okay. That um, and on a constant, on a constant v line, this is a constant v line remember my v and u conventions are always like that. So this on a constant v line, the relation between r and u that you can just figure out from these, these transitions is logarithmic. Okay. So, this is the relation. Yeah. So, the phase, phase shift is infinity between u 1, u 1 and u 0 because right. u coordinate. Right. Uh, so, how did you conclude from the, that omega will be very large? I mean, you wanted to argue that you no, no, no. Trace the ray. Yeah. So what I'm saying is that the 
you know the you measure the number of cycles okay uh, um, uh, per affine parameter change okay that is large okay so omega u divided by delta lambda okay that's uh, like your uh, um, so in terms of the affine parameter okay what will happen here on scry minus is that affine parameter now will be linear in v at infinity again you can show that r is linear in v so affine parameter here would be linear in v so delta lambda will be delta v essentially okay here delta lambda and delta u is not a linear relation the relation is given by the nonlinear relation between r so basically r star and um, delta r star is delta u but r star is given by log so this gives you the relation actually that the affine parameter is given by some constant times e to the power minus i u over 4 m okay this is what you get and if you backtrack it so this is the relation between the affine parameter changes okay so lambda is given by at any so in particular if this is lambda 1 okay so then lambda 1 will be given by e to the power minus e 1 over 4 m okay this is the important uh, uh, observation and then this lambda 1 when it is backtracked further into here lambda 1 just becomes v 1 okay so you get actually you get v 1 minus v 0 to be equal to that which means that I get a logarithmic relation between so v minus v 0 is given by this. So I, I hope I am making it clear that the lambda here the difference of lambda is not the same as the difference of the small u variable okay, because u is not the affine parameter okay. it is some other thing that other thing in fact is the cross curl u. Okay. If you look at this relation I have said that this is equal to lambda this actually is the cross curl u okay which i have not written down here but so so but this this remark i'll come back to in 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 just a moment but the result of this backtracking tells me that the value of v1 corresponding to a given u1 is 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 this okay if i was tagging on a particular u1 then it is given by the value of v1 is given by this. Therefore, this, this wave e to the power minus i omega u when backtracked here it becomes e to the power minus i omega times a constant sorry is the other way I have to now solve for u in terms of v minus v naught. So, it gives you some relation like u equal to minus i omega minus 1 over kappa. So, I'll, I, I have introduced now this kappa parameter here, okay. it's log of v minus v naught. Okay. So, this becomes the same as v minus v naught i omega over k. So, the wave which looks like exponential of minus i omega u, here it looks like a power law okay, in terms of the small v uh, coordinates. So, in order to find out how the mixing between the future modes and the past modes are, I have to do a Fourier transform of this. This is precisely what we did yesterday. Okay. So, therefore, I am not going to do it anymore, I am just going to write down the result. First of all, this object will have both, clearly there is some arbitrary function of v, I mean there is some, some function of v, okay. it can have the positive frequency guys as well as the negative frequency guys okay and therefore it will have the bogoliubov coefficients alpha 
and beta and the relation between the beta and alpha will be given by exactly what we found yesterday. Okay, so, let me do that. Ah, I rubbed off the thing that is which I should have. <coughs> okay, so what we find is that this B omega U which is I am writing things somewhat schematically, there are constants here, unimportant constants which I am not writing. So, this is alpha omega omega prime e to the power minus i omega u plus beta omega omega prime e to the i omega u. These, this is a omega and this is a bar omega and so, that is my, uh, these are my Fourier uh, coefficients and yesterday we have derived this, that this is equal to e to the power minus. <coughs> okay, maybe I should, uh, yeah, so anyway, so this, this will just turn out, if you uh, compare with yesterday's uh, uh, formulas, yesterday we had exponentials with expon e to the power minus a u. Okay, I had that acceleration parameter a, that a is being replaced by 1 over 4 m now. Okay. So, this is called the surface gravity kappa. So, basically in all the formulas that appeared yesterday, okay, I have to replace this a by kappa, the surface gravity. Okay. So, a played the role of temperature yesterday, today surface gravity will play, play the role of temperature. Okay because it is exactly the same thing that is being Fourier transformed. This is the stuff that appeared yesterday with i omega over a, now today it is i omega over kappa. Okay. It just follows from the uh, expression of the tortoise coordinate. Okay. It was right there. Okay. So, I have, okay, good. So, therefore, it is given by, uh, sorry, it is given by this. Okay, this is the relation, well, mod, and uh, with this you can find out the, uh, so these are the mixing between the mode functions, therefore there will be the mixing between the creation and annihilation operators also, exactly the same kind of mixing. Okay. So, therefore, I will find that in the in vacuum, the uh, this uh, okay. These guys will be given by e to the power minus beta omega minus one whole to the power minus one. So where beta is given by. So yesterday beta was given by two pi over a. Now it will be given by 2 pi over kappa okay, and kappa is, we have defined this kappa to be 1 over 4 m, it is actually equal to the surface gravity. So, this is 8 pi m. Okay. So, I am just uh, borrowing uh, quite freely from yesterday's results because I derived them in great gory detail. Okay. So, we have a Planckian distribution coming up of the out modes in the in vacuum. Okay. Uh, actually, the story is somewhat more complicated because I have ignored the back scattered waves. Okay. So, there are there is only a certain fraction of the waves that enter the black hole geometry and passes through uh, you know in the pre pre horizon formation phase it passes through the other thing that is a fraction that goes in. So, instead of 1 instead of uh, so there there will be a coefficient here there will be a coefficient that gives the, uh, that takes into account the uh, transmission coefficient um, of uh, this one uh, through the potential value. So, let me say once more what I am trying to say here is that, so there is the scalar wave sees the potential of this kind. Okay. 
Okay. So, there is some collapsing matter and before horizon has formed, so I am again drawing the negative r axis. So, the part of this, this wave gets reflected back and so the and, 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 and only a part of this goes uh, out and of course, it gets the same potential barrier here again and etcetera, etcetera, whatever, but the stuff that goes in okay, is not. So, if I start with unit amplitude here, it is not a unit amplitude that goes in, okay, it is some fraction of that unit amplitude that goes in. So, yesterday I used some relation like alpha square minus beta square equal to 1 okay, from the uh, consideration of uh, normalization, unit normalization, that unit normalization is with respect to the original wave, it if it just went through, it is not going through, as a result there is a certain factor. Okay. This factor is related to what is called the gray body factor. Okay. So, that um, I am going to uh, write down an expression which will make it a uh, uh, little more uh, quantitative in just a moment. Okay, so, that is what it is. So, we, 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 we get a Planckian spectrum. And let me just say that this observation, the fact that the, uh, the affine parameter, okay, which characterizes this null rays, okay, when they are backtracked all the way up to, uh, up to this um, scry minus, okay, they look like v, small v. Okay. However, if I just stopped short here okay, to, this, uh, to this ray, here it looks like exponential of minus u over 4 m. So, that is like the Kraskal u. Okay. So, if I am stopping here, then it is like taking a wave which is coming from this side. So, let me unfortunately, I have rubbed out, rubbed out that. Um, so, let me, let me draw this thing again. So, take that Penrose diagram. Okay, so, we are backtracking a wave from here to here. Imagine doing this calculation in the full uh, uh, eternal black hole geometry. Okay. And uh, so, then you know, uh, so you can think of some wave which lands up here as e to the power minus i omega u. Okay, actually, well, let, let, let me say it this way, something that backtracks to e to the power minus i omega v here, if you backtrack it only up to the past horizon, then it looks like e to the power minus i omega u. Okay. So, instead of thinking of these modes, okay, the modes which are the early modes, okay, modes which um, so, these modes, all the early modes, you can replace them okay, by, uh, by some modes on the past horizon, by on the, this is the past horizon, on the past horizon, which look like e to the power minus i omega capital U. Okay. Then the mixing is between e to the power minus i omega capital U here and e to the power minus i omega small u here. This point of view is called the unruh vacuum. This is some choice of modes, which gives you exactly, which mimics the collapsing black hole situation sitting in the eternal black hole. With that, what you do is that this mode expansion is done in the following, thought up in the following way, that instead of this, you split these guys between the v less than v 0 and v greater than v 0, these two sets. And the v less than v 0 guys, okay, which are still going out here, okay, you replace this by these modes by the cross curl modes, this k omega of u, u. Okay. So, this gives rise to the choice of three different kinds of vacua in the um, in the eternal black hole uh, geometry setup. One is always using 
the Minkowski clock. Okay, positive frequency modes given by e to the power minus i omega t, the Schwarzschild t all the time. That's called the Boulware vacuum. Okay, or the Schwarzschild vacuum. Okay, so those are these modes for i omega small u e to the power i omega small v. Or you can take Kruskal modes always. Okay. Even at uh, r equal to infinity, you are taking Kruskal modes. That's called the Hartle-Hawking uh, vacuum or the Kruskal vacuum. Okay. However, the situation that uh, best describes the uh, collapsing black hole situation is the Unruh vacuum. Okay. So let me say something right away that for these three kinds of uh, vacua, so for now I am talking about eternal black hole. Schwarzschild vacua uses a mode expansion which is e to the power minus i omega v e to the power minus i omega u on the right and the left. Okay, so this is something that uh, <coughs> I have called a omega plus a omega tilde on the right and a omega prime on the left. Omega plus on the left, uh, uh, on the left, yeah. <coughs> this is for this and for Kruskal everything will be e to the power minus i omega capital well so there will be only a uh, global modes no left and right okay so i call them k omega u and k tilde i omega sorry v these are global modes like the minkowski modes this this so this the vacuum created by such modes this is called Hartle Hawking or the Kruskal vacuum, and that is the same as the uh, in yesterday's discussion. This is the Minkowski vacuum. Okay, these are the modes which best describe okay the physics of the freely falling observer. Okay, because the Kruskal coordinate is the one that is smooth. Okay, at the at the horizon. Okay, so this guys. But you can have a mixture. You can have a mixture. That's the U vacuum. Is, is is that you use the uh, you use these modes, and you use these modes. Okay. You use e to the power minus i omega capital U and e to the power minus i omega small v. With this, you can do your calculations without the details of this uh, complicated collapsing geometry. And let me give you the uh, there's a very nice paper by Kanekarta, uh, which computes the uh, stress tensor of this. And what you find is that <coughs> what you find is that there is a um, so there's a T mu nu calculation in various vacua. So this is uh, in the Zero unruh vacuum. Yeah. Ah, so my um, V is going like that, and U is going like uh, this. Little U goes to infinity at the future uh, horizon. Uh, <clears throat> right. So, these, these modes are smooth at the future uh, horizon. Little v, yeah. Right. So, these, these modes are okay at the future horizon because u is uh, 0 in fact. Okay. It's, a, it's, a, it's a finite smooth value. So, um, with this I find that uh, in, uh, uh, so for, for mu nu equal to E and R in that 2 by 2 space, R going to infinity. If uh, somebody is interested, I can uh, tell them 
privately how this uh, stress tensor calculations go. Uh, so, it is given by um, minus 1, minus 1, uh, 1, 1. Okay, this is how it goes, where L is something called the luminosity of the black hole that is given by basically the integrated uh, Planckian distribution folded with the with some folded with the gray body factor so this is that uh, reflection uh, transmission coefficient business here and um, and this is the Planckian distribution. This is the amount of energy that comes out of this uh, uh, thing. As you can see, that uh, if you look at uh, T T R, this uh, um, particular uh, quantity, that's minus one over here. This is this is the T T. This is T R. This is R T, and this is R R. So T T R is minus. Okay. Uh, therefore, T lower T r that is plus, so which means that the flux at infinity is positive. Okay. So, there is a constant uh, outflux of energy at infinity. You can also check the, the, uh, the same quantity as it goes uh, in the limit of r going to 2 m. I am not writing that expression here but uh, it is finite okay, in this unruh vacuum it is finite and it is positive. Okay. So, there is an outflux from uh, this as you expect some energy is going out of the black hole and reaching at uh, this thing. So, that is the uh, that is confirms that there is Hawking radiation there is radiation this is of course, uh, what is Hawking radiation and um, so, we have therefore, proved that okay, so, you can prove some more things that this unruh vacuum is actually an entangled state in pretty much the same way as uh, this uh, here the entangled happen, entangling happens only in the tilde variables. Okay. Remember that the small v okay, is shared small v coordinate is shared between the unruh vacuum and the Schwarzschild vacuum. Okay. The Schwarzschild modes and the unruh modes have the same e to the power minus i omega small v, but capital U okay, that is changed. Okay, so, the u variable, okay, the, the, the outgoing modes, the outgoing modes have a mixing. Okay. So, as a result, the, uh, there is there's an entangle, uh, entangling of only outgoing modes. These are entangled pairs as I had uh, claimed uh, last time, but even this of course, is actually a coherent state okay, uh, in terms of the Schwarzschild uh, observer. But uh, where this is pure with the help of this a prime uh, uh, a prime modes which are coming from the left okay they are coming from the left or in the collapsing geometry these are the outgoing modes inside the horizon okay so with so with this a prime well uh, the the u modes modes a prime uh, omega tilde and a prime omega uh, uh, the a omega tilde okay you have a pure state now as long as the black hole is actually there it's all fine this way of getting a pure state but now we have proved that the black hole has a uh, positive outgoing flux therefore it's losing mass okay you can in fact compute the uh, rate at which it's uh, losing mass is just integrating out this flux and so on and uh, so therefore uh, the you know eventually you have the situation that the black hole uh, evaporates away so so the uh, so this is the so now uh, you might say that well if uh, that means that if the mass is actually time dependent i should have done this whole analysis with time dependent mass and a time dependent geometry okay the attitude that is taken here is the following that for a large enough black hole the temperature of the Hawking radiation is very small 
okay, is given by inverse temperature somewhere. Okay, so, remember the beta, the inverse temperature was given by 8 pi m. So, the temperature of the Hawking radiation, we have derived this now, is given by 1 over 8 pi m. So, for a very large mass black hole, the temperature is very small. So, therefore, the rate of Hawking radiation is also very small, right, because you know you, by Stephen Boltzmann law. Now, so that uh, uh, is a very small rate. So, therefore, you can use adiabatic uh, uh, approximation that and as a result, uh, you can say that, hi. Right. The Hartle Hawking vacuum is suitable for the in, uh, or infalling also at the future horizon, also the Unruh vacuum. I see. It is something that is singular, uh, non, non regular at the, uh, so that you can see uh, from this uh, uh, calculation. Okay, good. So, um, yeah, well there is a subtlety in that, uh, so we, we can come back to that one uh, later. So, uh, but let me just, uh, okay, good. So, now, um, so, let me just mention in um, uh, how much, uh, uh, 5 minutes, okay, right, all right, no, no, so I will I'll, I'll just make the main point now and uh, so, um, so therefore, we have this back reaction and the collapsing black hole geometry which would which is normally this way, after it gets evaporated, okay, it has an additional Minkowski part. So, this in fact becomes the collapsing black hole geometry. The black hole has evaporated out and then you, you are left with um, just pure radiation. So, I will tell you how, how that uh, thing goes. So, this is the standard collapsing black hole geometry. So, go back to the same intuitive picture of S matrix that we had uh, uh, talked about earlier that there is some ball of matter that is going in and you have 0 particles to n number of particles uh, coming out that was still an S matrix which was. Uh, uh, described unitarily, but now what is happening is that this matter itself is evaporating completely. So, if at each stage, okay, so let me let me let me go at uh, uh, say this uh, carefully again. So, you had a pure state here, okay, which used the inside modes as well as the outside modes, and um, uh, in terms of then it was a mere matter of convenience if you wish that if you wanted to describe the physics outside okay like expectation value of any of the outside uh, operators then you just traced over this inside variables and you got a thermal density matrix given by the hawking temperature okay so there's no problem here but now the you know the, the black hole is shrinking and eventually at some stage there are there is no inside and there is no inside mode so, if at every stage Hawking's calculation remained right, then this will be the picture that let us say, you know, so the, uh, all these calculations actually of this log and so on and so forth, these are uh, for very uh, late radiation because this high blue shift, okay, involved uh, going close to the. So, for late radiations, let us say, so let me let me let me zoom uh, to this one. The mass of the black hole is changing a little bit adiabatically. So, let us say from here to here, 
I can um, approximate the mass to be constant and this is then some uh, temperature, uh, some, some mass m 1 and the mass is decreasing from here to here, okay. it is a thermal bath of, okay. so the density matrix outside, okay, it just uh, is some ever decreasing mass, ever increasing temperature and so on and so forth. So, it gives rise to in, in real space, it gives rise to outgoing shells of radiation of temperature T 1, temperature given by 1 over M 1, 1 over M 2, which are jumps in small steps and eventually the black hole has exploded, the last one here has infinite temperature. Okay. These are of course all um, you know very idealistic uh, things. I mean your calculation will break down uh, when you reach Planck length anyway. So, but this is if you extrapolate Hawking's calculation blindly, then this is what you will be left with. Okay. Now of course, there is no, uh, uh, no inside, once you are here, there is no inside which um, can uh, do this purification of this mixed state. This mixed state now is a genuine mixed state and uh, is furthermore, you know, it, it does not even remember the details of the initial pure state, the details of the collapsing matter. So, the thing has completely evaporated out and you are left with the shells of uh, radiation. Okay. So, uh, two things, two bad things have happened. One is that a pure state has evolved into a mixed state and the other thing is that uh, you have um, also of course, lost the memory of the initial uh, state. These are, these are uh, you know, related to each other of course. And uh, so that's, uh, so this is the information loss uh, 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 paradox and uh, it is uh, Hawking called it the breakdown of quantum mechanics in the presence of black hole because Schrodinger evolution of course, uh, cannot lead to pure state going to a pure state, uh, the pure state going to a mixed state and even all, all states are uniquely uh, determinable in the past from the future also. So, um, many to one evolution as well as pure to mix both are, uh, okay. so this and uh, so there are, um, so the, you know one of the, so Subrath has already discussed uh, uh, some of the uh, ways of uh, getting around uh, this of course, one is to say that, uh, you know, so as you are progressing towards this, okay, actually the amount of entanglement that is expressed in this uh, thing okay, is not quite right. Okay. It is not uh, this, the amount of entanglement actually is also decreasing. As the amount of, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the size of the Hilbert space in, in inside is decreasing, okay, the amount of entanglement is also decreasing. So, eventually by the time you have reached very uh, late here, okay, you are, uh, you, you, you have a pure state without the help of any inside mode. So, it is always a pure state here, remember that is always a pure state of course, but it is a pure state including the inside modes, including the inside modes here and uh, yeah, including the inside modes for, for any of these uh, slices and uh, then uh, by the time you are reaching uh, very uh, uh, close here, by the time half of the black hole entropy has uh, come out. Uh, in the in the radiation, this is you know called this uh, page time. You have to start wrapping up all the entanglement uh, from inside, and uh, so um, so anyway, that's 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 a long story. So in uh, so there has been a um, uh, sort of uh, 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 request um, uh, for me to explain uh, how a microscopic calculation is done uh, of uh, Hawking radiation in the D1, D5 system. So, I will uh, take some 10 minutes perhaps in the discussion um, uh, to explain how that is done and uh, indeed, uh, yeah, uh, okay, uh, let me stop here. <coughs> Thank you much, Gautam. We have time for a few questions. Uh, anyone would like to 
ask any questions. Uh, this is your last chance. <laughs> we'll have the discussion session. But uh, yeah, Nile has his hand up. One minute. Let me get the mic over to you. Uh, when you uh, derive this uh, relation for the uh, Hawking radiation, you consider the mode which is like just outside the horizon but almost grazing it. I mean, yeah, it, w w was that crucial for this geometrical optics? Yeah, it was. It was because uh, this uh, very very high blue shift is there only near the horizon. You know, otherwise, uh, if you come uh, further away from the horizon, then uh, it's um, uh, you know it it's a it's a function. It's basically given by the behavior of this uh, tortoise coordinate uh, uh, with respect to uh, so you know the this R star only near R equal to m. It's a function which is changing very uh, uh, rapidly. So, I mean, uh, physically, that means that we have to wait a long to see the Hawking radiation with its characteristic temperature and all. Yeah. Well, long meaning um, that's right. But then, of course, it's also going to um, uh, you know evaporate very slowly. So you have a lo lot of time for the black hole to. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> Any other questions? Uh, you said that for null uh, geodesics, your affine parameter la lambda is just r. So how that comes? Um, that's a bit of a derivation. I can uh, do this in the uh, discussion session. It's easy. I mean, uh, you just uh, do the, uh, you know the geodesics can be found from this cute variational principle, like uh, you know you write down the Lagrangian, not the square root Lagrangian, but the without the square root Lagrangian. Uh, for uh, a particle, a demand that uh, um, I'll explain. It's, it's, it's really easy. It's, it's just a few lines, but uh, I have to write some things. It will take time uh, during the discussion session or privately. I can. I can. Yeah, mm. yeah. Thank you. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So basically, uh, suppose the black hole w was um, uh, not evaporating at all. Okay, then of course, uh, you know, it will be sort of a stream of uh, uh, radiation at a given temperature, one over m, um, uh, like that. But then, uh, let's say that you know, up to so this shell is a little bigger, maybe. So radiation is coming like that. So now, by this time, I realized that the black hole mass has changed. Okay. Now it's the same story. Okay. Again, that uh, the black hole has started emitting now uh, um, radiation at some uh, you know uh, temperature one over m2. M2 is just m1 minus epsilon. I'm thinking of this in steps. So again, it goes. Uh, so this this shell has come out like this. This is the moving picture. These things will all all come, you know, keep going away from each other, of course, and um, and 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 there's a similarly, you know, now the shells are expanding, and after a while you realize that M2 description is not good, so then you have to go to the M3 description, okay, and uh, there will be shells and so on and so forth, and eventually when the black hole just evaporates, boom, then there's uh, infinite temperature radiation. That's right. This is a paradox because uh, you know the first of all, this is clearly uh, finally whatever is left is a mixed state. Okay. Because if if this this I mean, of course you know you, you need a real calculation with a microscopic. I mean it's some kind of real calculation to really say details about this uh, this uh, process. But um, I mean. 
from all the looks of it, it would seem that the final state, if all the steps that Hawking said is true, adiabaticity of course, will go at some stage. It will start getting very hot okay, and it will start uh, expanding, but one presumes that that will happen when it is all very small. Okay. The, the point that is made is that even way before you have reached this hot stage, okay, when the black hole is still quite large, okay, a lot of entropy has come out and very little of the inside is left, okay, so that uh, it essentially okay, has become a mixed state and there is no purification possible anymore by the amount of stuff that is still inside. Okay. So, that is the, that is the idea. Since this is Gautam's last lecture, uh, in keeping with our tradition, I re request Professor Swapna Mahapatra to please come and uh, give Gautam this memento on our behalf. Here it's co more complicated because of this extremal uh, huge set of ground state degeneracy effect. That is, your your S matrix will uh, also have to include the initial and final states of the the black hole, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Ideally, one would then like to build it up from Q on Q five, P equal to P bar equal to zero. And, but no, no. But then, sorry, I take that back. Because I I I would always. Uh, but still, is yeah. there a way to? But of course, I, I should I should uh, you know mention the caveat here is uh, these are all weak coupling calculations, and as a result, uh, you know the reason for, of course anybody can think of doing this calculation of collapsing uh, uh, black hole and evaporating in this context, uh, and uh, that would be perhaps an interesting calculation anyway to do. But uh, the point is that it, uh, the actual gravity uh, model is a strong coupling. And this is the weak coupling. There is a there is a coupling in the system which can be um, turned on. So perturbatively, we can have done calculations uh, in, in 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 that coupling constant. But it's very good. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Uh, Seven o'clock. It's really up to us. <laughs> but uh, any other questions, comments, uh, anything? Uh, Will it be very difficult to reproduce something like this for some Damon charges? If, if I insert some Damon fields? Uh, no, no, no. It can be done. There are, uh, so there are various kinds of uh, models. Of, so I should say that this was, of course, the first calculation of with minimal uh, scalars. But then there are more complicated uh, noveli which come into the problem, which uh, couple not only to the metric but to other uh, things, and uh, they, are, they, are, they are harder calculations uh, involving some function which I didn't even know of before that paper. Uh, uh, I should have known then, of course. This Klebanov uh, <laughs> and Krasnitz, uh, I think they um, did this. Uh, it's just matching functions. Now I know. <coughs> But anyway, so they, um, uh, yeah, 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 it can, it can be done. I mean, I think all moduli, uh, 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 I think, yeah, all moduli, all, uh, uh, you know, the massless uh, objects uh, have been worked out. So there's, there's a 20 dimensional, uh, there's a 25 dimensional moduli space in this game, which uh, they all have, uh, their, their Hawking radiation have been found, plus three. We have also looked at uh, this, this so called fixed scalars, non minimal uh, guys. 
And, and there, are, there, are, there are other things that you can do. You can put binding energy to the system, some people are asking about binding energy, by um, turning on some uh, B field. Okay. And that can also be done. This D1 D5 system has, um, you know, like there's, there's loosely bound uh, objects, but you can create a potential okay, uh, by introducing a B field, in the presence of which there is a binding. And uh, that makes um, some singularities a, a, a treatment of some things like that. These are binding directly to the string? These are, no, they're also. Yeah, so this, you know, you can have this runaway D1 uh, brain, okay, so it, it creates a potential well for the D1 brain to come back. <coughs> okay. Uh, any other questions or comments from Gautam? Okay, well, let's thank Gautam again.